Hello, this is John Burney, a senior network engineer with Light Tech, here to give you a brief overview of the Aruba NetEdit application. This application is designed with the ability to search, edit, validate, and deploy configurations exclusively to your Aruba CX switches. I'm going to review the major categories within NetEdit, uh, starting with the overview tab here. Um, this view provides custom tiles that are inherited from different queries we've done within that area. Uh, we can click this button here and see all the different queries um, we have done related to tiles that we have displayed. Uh, we can turn these on or off. If we want to add another tile, we can just hit the plus sign here. Um, as you can see, there's different types of queries we can pull in. Devices, devices just different searches we have done on our switches. Um, there's different attributes we can search on. Uh, the plan is more related to configuration changes we have done within NetEdit. Uh, we'll create a test one here. We'll call it System Status OK. Uh, we have done a search prior on System Status of OK. In a different tab, we'll the review later. We'll make this a list. We'll toggle that on. And as you can see, we have our two switches here with the system status of OK. Uh, that status was uh, marked green here. So if everything is OK with our switch, we'll get a green mark there. And then we'll get a system status of OK. These tiles are fully customizable. We can move them around however we like. Get them up or down or expand them. So, as you can see, it's just a nice overview of what is going on in your environment relating to your CX switches. We're now going to move to the devices tab. Uh, the devices tab gives us all of our switches that are managed by NetEdit. As you can see, I have two 8320 switches here. Uh, these switches are fully searchable. Um, so all these attributes here, uh, we can query. I've created some um, <clears throat> pre-scripted queries here. So this one here is four devices. So this attribute I've assigned to this switch here, to both these switches here. So as you can see, they both come up, in, come up here. If I was looking for devices that are not a core switch, then I would, they would be listed here if we had any. Uh, we can take these categories and add and remove them. So we go to column settings here. Uh, let's say we wanted to see the model number. We can add that. Uh, we can remove any of these other ones and then do full queries on any of these categories. Uh, the full list here I'll bring into the screen. Here's a full list of all the different queries we can make. So let's go over this real quick. As you can see, you can get pretty granular with, with what you're looking for with your switches. These two switches I've brought in uh, via Discover Devices. Discover Devices is a nice, easy way to bring on all your switches. We can target a subnet range here. So for example, um, I'll bring in all devices in this range, add credentials, REST, SNMP, SSH, uh, this lets the switch be fully manageable. Put in our seed address, which is basically our core in most cases, um, the device that's able to reach all the switches in this subnet range, and then they should come right in this right in this list here. We can also click on these switches and view more detailed information. As you can see, we have uh, some more device details here. Uh, we have a revision history. We can see what time uh, each switch was edited last. Uh, we can also create a plan, and we'll go over that more later, uh, but the create plan feature is basically how you're going to edit the running configuration of your switches. Um, these attributes up here I've manually assigned. Uh, you can go in settings and create a custom attribute and then assign that attribute to your switches, so then you can query those, those attributes or create tiles in the overview tab. Um, some more actions here we have on these switches. If we just want to view the running config, we can. The startup config, uh, view the hardware info, firmware, uh, or just reboot the switch. So this is a nice uh, 
way to view some more information about your switches as well. So now we're going to move on to the plans tab. Uh, the plans tab is basically how we configure all of our switches. Whether or not that's one switch or multiple switches, uh, we can deploy those configurations, uh, do checks on them, and then roll back if needed or commit. So we'll take a look at uh, this sample plan that I've created. Um, this plan here, all I did was add NTP. So we'll look at the diff view for core two. We can see that here's the current state of the switch and this is the configuration snippet that I'm adding. Turn to the plan. Now I have already deployed this configuration. Um, but I have not committed the configuration to the startup. So all I have to do is hit commit on that. If for whatever reason I want to roll it back, uh, I can just click roll back, it takes the configuration out. Uh, if we click on uh, our change validation before we committed to uh, the running to the startup configuration, um, all of these show commands are going to be um, ran against the running configuration. Um, so just a nice way to uh, view the results of putting in a certain command uh, to our switch. If I were to deploy this to multiple switches down here, I would just select these switches and then deploy. Let's go back to how we actually start a plan. So we click on the switches we want to look at. We go up to action, uh, edit config. We're gonna create a test plan here. These attributes, um, are static values, so I can create a change ticket number, uh, approved by, and then the state of the plan uh, that we're creating. So create that. This brings in the configuration for both switches that I selected. Um, it's very easy to see which switch we're looking at because down here it will give me the name of the switch. Uh, that the command relates to. As you can see, this OSPF configuration here uh, is only related to core one. But let's say we had a config that was part of both switches. So right here, both switches have an IP address under interface VLAN one. All I have to do is highlight that and I can see both IP addresses that are assigned to each switch. If I want to edit one of those two values, all I have to do is right click and then edit that IP address and hit apply. So it's a nice way to look at both of the configurations of your switches without accidentally applying the wrong config to one of the switches. If we wanted to remove one switch entirely, all we have to do is move the checkbox, and we can see here that this is just the config for lab core 2. So very easy way to, to make sure we don't make any mistakes. Some of these plans here, which are modified by the system, are just config changes I've made in the CLI. Um, so those will come through too. If we want to see the state that the config was in when I made that change, all we have to do is go to view, and this is how the switch config looked uh, when I made my change. So if we had an issue with a, uh, a network outage, we can go take a look at what the config change was, and then either roll back or apply you know, the, the fixes to the switch. So very, um, very easy way to get a holistic view of, of what changes have been made to your switch. Uh, just like devices, we can also uh, fully search any of these categories. Um, I've created a saved query, basically um, giving me the status of deployed success. So right here, if you hit deploy success, it's gonna list all of my plans that I've made. But these are, uh, like I said before, these are all fully searchable. Similar to the devices, we can go over to here, column settings, and add or remove all of these different columns that we can search on. So let's say we just have a quick change we want to make. Uh, one line config, we don't want to create a plan. Uh, this is just going to be something that we're going to make a quick change to a switch. Uh, we go up to devices. Uh, selected devices we're making the change to, just like we did with the plans. But this time we're going to go down to deploy solution uh, and we can add or remove configurations uh, to any number of switches. So uh, we just want to create a VLAN, a preview, and it just adds that VLAN to the switch. So this is a nice easy way to uh, just make a quick change to a switch uh, without you know, looking at multiple switches and bringing in configurations.
a pretty nice option there as well. The last major category we'll cover is the network tab. So the network tab gives us a good graphical view of all of our switches we've brought into NetEdit. As you can see, I've grouped these two switches together um, and called them four, uh, showing two switches in that group. If I want to create another group, all I would have to do is go up here uh, and select a switch, then select a group. So this would be a nice way to bring in your distribution switches if you had any and then your access layer switches and get a nice tree structure of, of all your switches. Uh, we can click on this link between the switches to see what ports are connected to each switch or click on one switch individually and see all the different uh, general properties that are listed for this switch showing uh, all what's connected to each interface. Uh, we can also look at other categories which are selectable over here. So we want to turn these on and off we can. Uh, a nice view here is the network analytics. As you can see, that's the end here. That's listed uh, green, so showing all statuses are, are good. Uh, using this drop down menu here, uh, we can look at uh, fan monitor, click on this. Now this will be a hyperlink taking us to the actual core one switch. So we click this, logs us in core one switch. Um, now we can look at the fan analytics right here. So this is real time. Um, we can also go back in time, but yeah, this is a, a great way to uh, jump right into whatever you want to look at. Looking more at the analytics here while we're in here, um, we can go to the main analytics page, brings in all the analytics that I already have um, added here to the main screen. If I wanted to add more, I could just click on agents, uh, create, and then add more to our list here. And these would populate through and net it like these as well. Uh, we can also download more uh, from the Aruba Solutions Exchange. So this is a, a publicly accessible uh, forum where you can uh, submit your scripts to Aruba and they will um, they will review them and submit them if they're acceptable. Uh, we can click right here to download additional scripts. And any one of these right here could be added to our analytics. Jumping back to the uh, NetEdit uh, network tab, uh, we can also right click directly on a switch and do just about anything that we could do with the other categories. So if we just want to view the configuration of core one, we can see that here. Um, if we wanted to make a plan, uh, we can just click edit config and then make a plan from there. So very easy to um, jump right to the network tab and kind of do everything that you that you want to do. We can do the deploy solution, edit attributes, jump right to the web GUI, or add additional switches directly from, from this view. Uh, if there were any critical alarms, we would also see them come through. This would be red, and then it would list what uh, what's in red, um, what would be going wrong with the switch at that time. I'd like to now go over some of the minor categories within NetEdit. Uh, first, the firmware repository is where, where all our firmware is stored. We can create a plan and reference any firmware file in here uh, to do a switch upgrade. The users category is just all of our system users. Uh, we can create different roles, technicians for read-only, admins for rewrite, and then change in the passwords if we want. The logs category is where all our system notifications are stored. We're going to get anything in here from creating a plan, adding an attribute, or even device alerts. Uh, so everything in here is stored. Uh, we're going to get multiple pages of alerts, and we can even export uh, any logs you may want to. Moving to the notifications tab, this is where we create custom alerts. Uh, as you can see, I have two created here. <clears throat> One for modifying the configuration. Uh, whenever the match is greater than zero, we're going to get an alert, uh, and we're also going to get a log event. Uh, we'll just jump into one of these right here. Uh, we can see that um, <clears throat> I assigned a query. So I created this query back in devices, if you remember. Uh, so I'm just referencing this query that I created, uh, but I can reference any number of queries that I've created in the past uh, with the other categories. Um, and then select uh, any one of these three to trigger uh, a, log, a log event. Look over to here, 
Uh, this is specifically where these alerts are that I've created new notifications. So they're listed here as well, um, and then in logs too. So there's the enemy alert that I've created. Moving to the next category, we'll look at the diagnostics tab. Diagnostics um, is, is where we would look at all of the uh, events uh, for uh, switches that we've attempted to pull into NetEdit along with the reason why they may not have pulled into NetEdit. So it could be anything from missing an API command to having a password incorrect. Moving on to the settings tab. This is where we can change the overall settings in NetEdit. We can uh, do anything from change the theme to edit the way the text looks in the running config. Uh, the validation tab. Uh, this is where we can <coughs> Uh, validate certain uh, commands are in our running configuration. Uh, if there's a government mandate or if we just want to uh, make sure all the switches have uh, similar passwords, SNMP strings, and whatnot, and then trigger alerts uh, based on these requirements. Change validation. Uh, this is where uh, we can review our configurations, our plans that we're going to apply, and run these show commands uh, against. Uh, those commits that we're making. Uh, deployment. Uh, this is for uh, rollback features. So we can roll back uh, the switch config uh, if we don't auto confirm. Attributes. This is where I created the um, static value that's tied to one of our switches. Um, the core switch was tied to those two core switches. It made this a searchable attribute. Uh, and I also you know, tie that to a new review tab as well. So this is where you would create um, different attributes. Plan, we can also create uh, another category. If you remember when we created a plan, um, we can create another attribute and uh, give this a static value. Manage subnets, this is again, uh, this is just where our Managed subnets are stored. Uh, if we wanted to search for additional switches, we would do that back um, in the uh, network or devices tab. Our credentials are stored here. And lastly, our proxy settings.